Intel 13th generation is here. And as always, Intel like to jazz things up for us content creators out there with fancy presentation boxes. So with the upcoming official launch, we thought we'd take a look at what we've been sent and go through kind of what we can expect and how things could compare to AMD's new 7000 series Zen 4 processors. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. I wish these files would transfer faster. Come on! Whoa, is that the Firecuda 510 NVMe drive with its blistering fast speeds of 3450 megabytes a second read, 3200 megabytes a second write, and capacities of up to two terabyte? I can have these files transferred in no time. And if I'm looking for the ultimate performance, I could even get the fourth generation Firecuda 520. I better check the link in the description to find out more details. So Intel's 13th generation range of processors, codenamed Raptor Lake, which I've got to admit, instantly makes me think of Jurassic Park, but also leaves me with a lot of questions. So I'm going to try and break it down here into sections, starting with what we actually have here in this box. What 13th gen is meant to be bringing to the table, especially in comparison to its predecessor, the 12th gen, codenamed Alder Lake. And of course, leading up to comparisons against AMD's latest Zen 4 CPUs as well. So the box. Over the years, Intel's always been fighting with both AMD and kind of itself to make it even better each generation, not just for press, but for consumers too. Now, being press does mean that we get something you know, pretty cool. And I'm always eager to see kind of how things get better. And though a lot of them are actually out of shot, we always keep our little press packs kind of scattered around the studio. And anyone who's actually visited here, like our Patreons for our yearly Patreon meetup, would have actually seen how cool they look in here. The last couple of launches have seen, I guess, a big emphasis on the die shot. It's almost like nerd porn to some, and does actually look quite cool when you can see the various cores, whether they be performance or efficiency based cores, and how it kind of all comes together. And that's exactly what we get when we open this up. I mean, it's hella reflective, but it looks very, very cool. Now within that, when we open up one side, we actually find a little plaque with, again, another die shot on there. So, you know, there's a real kind of big emphasis on that. And on the other side, it actually tells us all about the 13th gen lineup, with specs for the 13600K, 13700K, and 13900K, along with the kind of number of the plaque. So yeah, we've got number 870 of 962. Again, we'll probably dot this around the studio somewhere, so you'll likely see it in future videos. Now, the other side, that's where we find the i5 13600K and the i9 13900K nestled in kind of their own boxes. And much like its predecessors, unlike AMD, the general design is exactly the same, with one of the kind of key reasons being that the 13th generation will work in Z690 boards. So not all is lost if you maybe move to 12th gen as a bit of a stopgap, with the plan always being kind of to move up to Raptor Lake. So what about the specs? Well, starting from the bottom and working our way up, the 13600K now comes with 14 cores in total, made up from six performance cores and eight efficient cores, which is a, a little boost up from the four efficiency cores that the 12600K came with, which also means that we now get a total thread count of 20, again, up from 16 on the 12600K. Now on top of that, the boost speed has been increased from 4.9 gigahertz on its predecessor to 5.1 gigahertz on the 13600K, along with increasing the L3 cache up to 24 meg from 20, and probably the biggest boost being the L2 cache going from 9.5 meg to 20 meg. In terms of how it compares with Ryzen, the 12600K and 5600X were generally quite close, and then the 7600X kind of improved on that ever so slightly. But from a spec standpoint, the 7600X seems a bit lackluster, with only six cores and 12 threads though more than kind of makes up for it with a boost clock of 5.3 gigahertz. I guess you could argue that the Ryzen 7 7700X is maybe closer match to this with the core and the thread count, uh, eight cores and 16 threads. But as we know, it's not the be all and end all. So I think it could be quite a fierce battle between them all and something we're definitely put to the test when, you know, we can talk about performance. Now, what about the i7 13700K? Well, the good news is that while Intel didn't send us one for launch day coverage, we do actually have one that we sourced from other areas. So we will have some content on that as well. 
Specs of the 13700K have seen a similar bump, now with 16 cores in total, spotting the same 8 performance cores that the 12700K had, but doubling up on the efficiency cores again from 4 to 8. And of course that consequently means we now get a total of 24 threads, compared to the 20 that the 12700K had. Speed-wise, we've seen a huge jump from 5GHz on the Alder Lake 12700K to 5.4GHz on the 13700K, and we've seen the same increases on the cache that we saw on the 13600K, with the L3 cache increasing from 25MB to 30MB, and the L2 cache seeing a massive jump from 12MB to 24MB. And it's all of this combined that could see some pretty big uplifts in performance over Alder Lake and AMD's latest lineup. Now I will get to potential pricing soon, but let's talk about the daddy, the flagship, the i9-13900K. I actually find myself struggling with the naming as I'm so used to saying 12900K, which I feel rolls off the tongue better than 13900K. Now this is probably the one that's going to excite people the most because it's seen some pretty crazy jumps, with 8 performance cores, much like the 12900K, but we now see 16 efficiency cores, a boost of double from its predecessors lowly 8 cores. A joke, but that's a pretty big jump that now gives us 24 physical cores and a massive 32 threads. I mean, we're reaching Threadripper territory now, which is pretty exciting on a consumer product. Now, the goodness doesn't stop there though, as we now have a max turbo frequency of <clears throat> 5.8 gigahertz. And with, uh, you know, talk of a processor that can hit 6 gigahertz at stock, though that's more likely to be, you know, a KS model. I think it's safe to say that Intel have won the speed argument in the speed department. Though AMD's 7950X does come in just behind with a boost clock of 5.7 gigahertz and the 16 cores that all have hyper threading. So we kind of get the same 32 threads in total, giving us some kind of really strong competition. Now again, we see some large cache gains from 30 meg of L3 cache on the 12900K to 36 on this and a larger L2 cache improvement from 14 megabytes to 32, which, you know, is only 128% improvement, so nothing major. Either way, I think on the high end it could get very, very interesting between AMD and Intel, and something I'm keen to show you guys when we can lift the lid on the performance side of things. So, I know the important one, what about pricing? Well, let's do some kind of direct comparisons against the prices that are being shown by retailers offering pre-orders right now, and you know, with that and how it compares against AMD. And things are actually quite close. So in the US, we obviously have pricing for all the AMD processors as they're available to buy right now. And Newegg are actually already listing the 13th generation uh, processors for pre-order. So we actually see the 13600K nestled between the 7600X and the 7700X, which would definitely make for an interesting fight. While the 13700K is priced $100 cheaper than the 7900X. So you could argue that performance wise it's probably closer to say an upcoming 7800X if anything. And then the 13900K, that's coming in just below the 7950X. So you know, will performance be reflected in that as well? I guess you'll find out soon enough. In the UK it's a similar story with the 13600K sitting between the Ryzen 5 7600X and the Ryzen 7 7700X. So I think again it's safe to say that performance would be reflected in that while the 13700K is actually about £80 cheaper than the 7900X. Now the big one in the UK, the 13900K, is actually coming in £70 cheaper than the 7950X, which depending on how performance goes, could be great for Intel, or if it goes the other way, AMD may have to do some kind of early price cuts. Either way, I think it's exciting, and given the choice, you now have options because if anything with AM5 and Z790 both offering PCI Express 5 on both GPU and NVMe storage, not that any devices are out yet, and both of them offering DDR5 and similar prices, it's kind of a close battle and I guess it all come down to the performance. So the big question based on this video and kind of what you already know so far, what processor will you be going for or are you happy with what you have already? Let me know in the comments section below. Kind of a uh, I wanted to make this video to give you an insight into what we have, so you know we have a ton of content coming, and kind of just to get your feedback. So definitely make sure you're subscribed to see the upcoming content. And like I say, more importantly, I kind of wanted to find out where our viewers' heads were in terms of buying a new CPU, and more importantly, buying a new platform. Because you know, it's not cheap. 
So again, any feedback, you know, would be great as it helps us to actually create content catered to you, the viewers. That aside, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And if you love what we do, then consider supporting us over on Patreon, where you'll get access to a ton of goodies, including all of our testing data, access to, you know, early access videos before they go live on YouTube, and that all important behind the scenes content. The link for that is down below. Till the next one, see you later guys. Bye-bye.